Thank you so much for coming. Welcome to the Emerging Teacher Side Hustle. I'm Jamie Lowe, I'll be moderating, but mostly stepping out of the way of the actual experts. Um, I came into this discussion after profiling about a dozen teachers who work second jobs. As part of the research for that article, I talked with hundreds of educators. Their work ranged from janitorial to lawn care to night shifts at Amazon warehouses to concession stands at movie theaters to dozens of full-time professionals managing to sneak in extra income through Uber, Lyft, and Airbnb. Anything that could you know, contribute to picking up hours to pay off student loans or just to pay month-to-month -month bills to stay afloat. They all sounded exhausted. Teaching is a full-time job with an extremely specific skill set. What separates these companies represented on this panel is that they all complement what teachers already do. They help teachers manage tutoring businesses, sell lesson plans, tutor to students in China in early morning hours, or support kids who are taking AP exams. This isn't just a panel on side hustles, it's also an examination on how businesses can support teachers. These are ways to keep highly skilled educators in education. And the panelists are Amanda, Doe Amaral. Doe Amaral. <laughs> Doe Amaral. Doe Amaral. I'm so sorry. I practiced that like seven times before the panel and totally failed. Joe Holland, CEO of Teachers Pay for Teachers. That's Amanda. Correct. Joe Holland is correct. Thank you. Uh, Amanda is the CEO of Fiveable. Uh, and then we have Megan O'Connor, co founder and CEO of Clark, and Kevin Klein, head of teacher community at VIP Kid. Uh, thank you all for coming today, and I'm sorry thank for you. being so thank attached you. to the yeah, words that I wrote. to be here. <laughs> oh, good. All right. Um, the first question I have is sort of open to all of you, which is how do you see your company supporting teachers in education and being teachers? I'll start. Uh, some of you may have heard VIP Kid is an online uh, English one-to-one, -one, uh, let me start again. VIP Kid uses American teachers in Canada and the US to teach English to students in China, ages four to 12, and we're able to help supplement teachers' income. So usually teachers will do this in the wee hours of the morning, four, five, six a.m. before going off to school or watching their kids for the day, maybe they're on maternity leave, and they're able to bring in two to three, even four hours of work before starting their day. Uh, so we see this as a supplemental um, opportunity, and it's ESL. So a lot of these teachers are English teachers or history teachers, but in the morning they're ESL teachers, and it's a skill that is you know, worth developing. So they do one-to-one -one and get to develop these lessons and these relationships with students in these 30-minute lessons. Yeah. Well, to answer your question how we see ourselves helping uh, educators work in education, um, so Clark is business management software for those who run tutoring businesses, and it's an end-to-end -end solution that allows you to run and scale a tutoring business. Um, and it started because of my mom's side hustle. So I was raised by a single mom who's a public school teacher, and she ran a tutoring business on the side. And in my 20s, I tried to help my mom run her tutoring business because I realized she wasn't making as much money tutoring as she could have because of how much work goes into running the mechanics of a tutoring business. Right. Um, so I can say to this day, my mom is doing a whole lot more educating and stayed in education because she used a product. We now work with thousands of educators who are running first-time businesses across the U.S. Uh, as a result. Um, but the cool thing is we ended up developing a layered system over the years. So the people who purchase our business management software now run businesses full-time. They are operators of their first social enterprise, a tutoring business, and then they employ, similar to VIP kids, stay-at-home moms, uh, educators on maternity right. leave, retired educators, teachers who are looking to make income on the side of their full-time job as a teacher. Uh, for me, Fiveable sort of became, the, it was evolved from my own teacher side hustle. I taught for many years in Oakland and was on all of these platforms trying to get my own side hustle on. Uh, and my own tutoring wasn't, you know, one-to-one, -one, you can only kind of go so much. And I felt like my own impact in like how I could actually reach more students wasn't, it wasn't just about like making money on the side, it was like how can I actually 
scale my own classroom. And so what we do now is we, we have seven teachers um, who teach and live stream lessons and Q&As and trivia games every week uh, in AP courses. And so we are supporting students after school. Uh, and my whole vision is that teachers are already doing so much work for their students in the lessons that they create and the projects that they create um, and what they are learning about what they're teaching and the strategies that they're using to really see growth. And those exact things can then be translated into, into a side hustle, right? So the, our teachers are not doing extra work. They are planning lessons for their students and then streaming them at night for us. Um, and then every student can then access those things um, for free and they can watch the live streams for free. So just sort of expanding that out. Cool. Teachers Pay Teachers, or we call it TPT, is the world's largest online marketplace where teachers buy, sell, and share um, classroom resources. And so we have almost 4 million resources on the site. We have about 70% of US school teachers who use the platform. And um, when we think about what TPT really does is it brings together this collective expertise, collective wisdom of teachers, and it shares out. It allows these teachers to, to support each other, to provide um, all of that uh, relief that you need, as you were talking about, Jamie, being in an overwhelming setting of being a classroom teacher. And so when we think about uh, kind of the concept of side hustle, we, we, I think we would call it more like a main hustle. The you know, TBT is really a place where um, people are helping each other do their work in a much more collaborative, a much more um, supportive uh, environment. And um, we see it all the time. We see teachers who say, you know, I would have, I would have quit the profession mm -hmm. had it not been for TPT. And that is uh, something that gets us up and uh, moving every day. Definitely helped me, and it helped. Yeah. I'm probably selling something right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs> so. um, one thing I'd like to just kick off a discussion about uh, is that you guys are all sort of coming from a business perspective. And I think to grow that business, you know, I'm sure that you all are going in different directions. But how do you grow the businesses that you're working on and maintain this idea that teachers should actually remain teachers? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you support both of those concepts? Yeah, I think it's a Go great ahead. question. And I'll, I'll take that one first. You know, the reason that we started Clark is so people like my mom could stay an educator. My mom and many other educators um, who already have left have chosen other verticals of work where they're making a lot more money as they were a teacher. Uh, you'll see it in churn rates from some of the major institutions who help people become educators in their early 20s. Very few of them go on and remain educators uh, in the long run. So when we built the product and we started to see the archetype of the person that was starting a business with Clark, um, what we said our mission was is let that person stay in education, let that person not choose a different career. And let's make sure that they're doing what they do best, which is actually educating. And that's why we do so much of the business administration. That's why our services do all the non-sexy stuff like payroll, invoicing, scheduling, CRM systems. Um, and then most importantly, very similar to a lot of the other uh, speakers here today, the people who are employed by a Clark business, they're staying an educator and they're having a frictionless experience opting in to becoming a tutor on the side of their career. Um, you know, someone wise once told me when I was young, if you're gonna become an entrepreneur, fix something that you hate. And I hate that teachers do not make enough money in America. And so that was the whole mission behind the company. What's great is that we built the product in a way where as their businesses grow, ours grow. So at the end of the day, our incentive is always to help them to spread more hours of education, keeping them teachers. Megan, I think I was gonna say, what's interesting that you just said is the friction piece. You know. Uh, letting teachers just teach, do the thing that they're best at. Mm -hmm. So in your case, it's like the business and the enterprise software that allows that happen. In, in VIP Kit, it's the platform, right? You open up your slots, students come to you, you show up, and you do your 30 minutes of engaging teaching, right? You're not managing a classroom, you're not managing the software, you're just staring at this other student and get to engage them. And that's a lot of people that I talk to that are still in the classroom, they say, Every morning they get re-motivated to teach because they have this one-to-one -one experience, right? Mm -hmm. And they get to do, use all their tools and see this kid grow. And then they go into their classroom that day and they're really excited about being there. Um, I think about Kim Saylor in Dallas, Texas. She's 
has this one student that she, she takes her class four days a week, and every day she's like, I just can't wait to see Nick. And then Nick gets me excited, and then I go into the classroom. And so you see more and more of that happening, getting that one-to-one, -one, and then us taking out the work, the, let them just do the, what they do best, right, Amanda, like the teaching part. Yeah, I mean, for me, my business was created out of me having to leave my classroom. Mm -hmm. I could not teach in Oakland anymore. It was too expensive to pay rent, and my student loans are a continuous burden on me. And so that was always at the heart of what I was, what I was doing. I wanted to be a teacher. I would have stayed. It was honestly like the most, that's the most frustrating story, right? A teacher who is doing good things in the classroom and has to leave because it is not financially responsible for me to stay. Right. And so in leaving, mm -hmm. I knew that one, like, I need to create something for myself, right? Like, that is that I get to still be a teacher. Like, I'm still streaming AP World Reviews. I don't know how long I'll be able to do that, but <laughs> as long as I can, I love it. And, and, and then beyond that, for all of our other teachers, too, and to, to create something where they're being valued in how much we're paying them, they're being valued in what I'm asking them to do. It's not, it's, it's really an extension of, their, of what they're already doing, right? Similar to you guys, where it's like, you're already creating this material. You already have this, this value that you're bringing to your classroom every day. You can, we can expand that. More students can, can you know, get to benefit from your knowledge. Um, and as we're continuing to grow, like, that's really at the like, heart of what we, what's important to me. Uh, and you know, we're, we're looking at like, having a marketplace rather than just like, hiring the teachers. right? And like, building, we're already building a wait list for that of teachers that are like, I already know how to teach literacy. Can I go teach other teachers how to teach literacy? And then can I help them live stream that? Uh, and so I think I'm trying to solve two problems. And it's always hard to like, pinpoint the, the, the point of the business. right? But it's like, there are students that need what we do, but there are teachers that need what we do as well. Um, and, and those are the two, there's always going to be those two sets of problems that are very much, you know, conjoined. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it, it, when we talk about starting with the teacher, um, ultimately the end goal, right, is you want to improve student outcomes, right? right? And we're all here, I think, to say that doing the work of teaching, doing the work of educating in itself can be incredibly um, taxing. Um, and, and disheartening and, uh, oftentimes. I remember uh, five years ago uh, hearing from one of our teacher authors, uh, whose name is Shelly Reese, she's uh, in Wyoming, and she was telling me how she was about to leave the profession. And she said, you know, I was burnt out, I was done, um, and Teachers Pay Teachers gave me this new lease. It basically gave me this um, re-commitment um, to what I was doing and what I started my career doing. Um, and and that is, that's really uh, what keeps us going. I mean, I think that um, there's a number of, you know, with 70% of US teachers on our platform, we have people come to us and say, why don't you just sell teachers a bunch of other stuff on the site? And the answer is that's, that's not why we're here. The answer, we're here to empower these educators to teach at their best. And we do that by bringing together this collective uh, sharing and wisdom and expertise. And, and I think that's something that um, grounds us each day as, as we do our work, even as the business grows. And Great. Jamie, I'll add one other note just about just especially like rural areas. I mean, I, th I see the trend here as well that's like technology driven, right? So you can stay in your classroom in a rural area, make money on TPT, mm -hmm. make money teaching students and stay in that, and there's one high school in that area, and be that amazing English teacher that inspiring those kids, you don't have to move somewhere else to do it. I know in the big cities like San Francisco, New York, you can get a tutoring gig for a lot of money, right? Um, but in these rural areas, those, aren't, those opportunities aren't there, and so you might move, your family might move out of there, and then these kids like lose an English teacher. Um, so I, I think that's really important that all these companies are kind of allowing us to do with technology. You can stay where you are. Yeah, and I think that technology ends up giving the educator agency over what is ultimately their take-home income right. in a career where they very rarely feel in control of how much money they make. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the stickiness of all of our products is that yeah. based on opting in, based on the level of usage, you're able to control your end income, which they can in the classroom. But also, like, as a teacher, I, was, I needed to have a side hustle. I needed to have several. And it was always like important for me to find one that didn't require me to do something else, mm -hmm. right? Like I want to be present for my students and that's going to require planning and grading and, and 
thinking about like how to support them. And so <laughs> I was trying to find hustles that would support that. Like I didn't want to go drive for Lyft or Uber because that's hours that I can't work. I'm mm -hmm. now in a car. Um, and or, you know, I don't want to go bartend. I don't want to do these extra things. I want to use the skill, like well, I'm a professional. Right, like I've learned these things, I've I've gotten better at them, and I've you know created these skills, and I want to be able to use those skills, um, and that should be my one income, um, but it's it's not. And so, like you were asking, how many side hustles do you have? I was like, you know, I was like in charge of tech at the school. I was a softball coach. I was like, it was you name it. I had like six things you asked me what. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it, eventually, I burned out because of that, and I couldn't really you know support that. Um, but I think just like. Making it so that teachers don't have to do something not related to their field. Yes. Right? That they can continue to use the skills that they have and share that and, and collaborate on that. And Amanda, can you describe in a little more detail what it was like for you in the classroom while you were juggling these six or seven side hustles? Yeah, so like, as an example, there was one day where I, um, I had like a, you know, a free period and during this free period, um, I needed to, one, make sure that my lessons for the next day were done because I needed to coach after school and also run a, a like ILT, a leadership team. I also needed to spend that prep period calling my own like credit card company and seeing if there was some way to get my student loans. Like, but just like crying, I'm like, just like, please, there must be something I can do. And so like having to then compartmentalize all of those different emotions and feelings and frustrations and stresses, um, you, you kind of learn how to just like not become like financially responsible, right? I stopped looking at my bank account because I'm like, that's not where I need to be right now. Like I need to worry about this kid who is, you know, struggling in this AP world class and they could be succeeding, but they're not because they just need a little bit more. They're not reading at grade level by the time I get them, right? And so we need to, I need to be pouring myself into this student. And so it got to a point where I, I basically was like, I'm, if I'm gonna stay teaching, I need to now leave all these different extra things I've done. I just wanna be a teacher. Um, and then that wasn't enough. And so, you so know, there's, pushing there's me out. So there's clear demand yes. for this market. Oh, every, I mean, I lived with six other teachers in a small house in Oakland. Like, yeah. all of us had 18 other things that we were doing. And so, yeah, how, so. so I guess then bringing it back to the marketplace that and the reality now, where do you guys see the future of what you're doing? How do you see your companies expanding? Are there other elements that you're hoping to kind of tap into? You know, what what do you see going forward? We can keep going yeah, can on the pattern that we've been. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so VIP Kids' ultimate mission is to create global learners and global ambassadors, both of our teachers and of our students in China. Um, the hope is that we expand worldwide and that uh, teachers from wherever they are, whether they're in Europe or you know, around the world, um, and wherever you're a student, you can get access to an, an online English education and then eventually even more. Um, so we're really focusing on building the platform, making the tech stronger, um, thinking about how we connect um, the right teacher with the right student at the right time, um, and then use personalized learning to take it to the next level. So it's, our mission is very much centered around global ambassadors, global classrooms. Um, I think one of the things, I, I run the community, right? So I'm constantly interacting with teachers from around the country, and the thing that I think is really interesting is they see themselves as ambassadors as well. I work with people that have never been out of the country and they want to go to China. They want to get their passport, they want to go, and if not, they're going to go to the Chinese restaurant down the street and have a meetup to celebrate a new culture. It's incredible to see them take on this whole new life with you know, interesting, in, being interested in another country, and the same thing goes from the students. These teachers have become the Mr. Rogers of these Chinese students that they're five, six, seven years old. So when they're, just picture them 20 years from now, um, they're gonna remember their first American teacher and what that experience was like. So that's our focus. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it just brings us all a little bit closer together and creates more empathy across the board. Where I see the future of our company going is that the demand for personalized learning is growing astronomically. It's, I mean, obviously the new education in yoga, but what we see right now <laughs> is that tutoring is right now for those people who are in the top 1%. 
Uh, it's not something that has been easily democratized to US-based students. And so for us, we see two parallel market trends happening at the same time. Educators who don't make enough money and families who want affordable solutions to get their children access to one-on-one -on -one instruction. We were talking about you know, one-on-one -on -one with VIP kids and our educators feel exactly the same way. When we say, you know, why do you tutor? They say, because the energy I get out of having a one-on-one -on -one experience with a student and watching them have an actual outcome because of uh, our instruction, that's what motivates me to stay a teacher. That's why I want to stay in the profession. And so what we want to do is we want to match these two market trends with one another. The fact that kids need to be working in more and more personalized environments. No kid, two kids learn the same. And we're not just talking about preparing for test prep, we're talking about learning skills that they'll take into their first profession, skills that are related to STEM or other subjects that they're not getting adequate access to in the classroom, and taking that and matching it with all of the educators out there who are saying so desperately, I want to stay a teacher, I want to keep educating, but I'm going to have to leave because I don't make enough money to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And so by helping more people create these micro, micro enterprises, more and more tutoring businesses outside of the franchise system, giving them ownership of these small tutoring businesses, we're going to be able to match that together. Uh, with Fiveable, we we have seven subjects right now. You know, we're still very much growing, and the like obvious path is get more subjects. Um, but for us, like AP is just where we started. It's what I knew. It's where I see a need. It's where I see influencers in schools are. Right? That they you think about what are the what's going on in the AP class, um, and so. I think we can focus on, on advanced subjects, we can do test prep, but there's a lot more to be learned. There's other things, we can do live streams in algebra, right? There's no specific test for that, but the kids need to know algebra. We could do live streams in sex ed, we could do live streams in personal finance, and there's a lot of different like topics, um, but I think there's also another half of this, and that's the teacher. And so, there, you know, I wanna be able to give teachers a space to teach how to be a teacher, um, because I don't see that. That's kind of similar to like teachers pay teacher, um, but to really like allow for um, actually like more group learning, where I think a lot of value happens because in a group um, there may be students in there that you are not normally around, and so in a one-on-one -on -one setting, you know, it's just you and that person, and they may or may not reflect what you look like. Um, but in a group setting, what I find is that uh, there's a lot of students across the or across the country, across the world that come into our live streams and bring perspectives that some of, some of our kids wouldn't normally get, right? And so when, we're, I'm, when I'm teaching about world history and I'm, or I'm, we're talking about the civil rights movement or we're talking about any like really major topic, it's really important that those voices are heard and are reflected. And so giving more space for what does it look like to have a, a side hustle, which side hustle are you going to, and being really intentional and in, in making sure that like our platform is inclusive and not only the teachers that are present, but also the students that get to interact with each other. It was so interesting to hear your perspective on being a teacher because it, it comes back to a lot of what we've been hearing at TPT over the years, which is that TPT provides this amazing sense of relief for, for teachers in the classroom. And we know there's this incredible demand for teachers pay teachers, and there's a gap in, their, in the, our ability to meet that demand because teachers pay out of their own, um, their own pockets for TBT, by and large, about 85%. Of, of teachers do, and so it's, on some, in some sense, it's this heroic and tragic thing at the same time. These teachers are coming out and saying, I need to meet the needs of my students, I need to fill some gaps, I need to differentiate. Um, on the other hand, they're, they're, uh, they're spending hundreds of dollars on, on things outside of the classroom, including on things like TPT. And when we think about the future of TPT, it's about changing this. and, and um, I, I think I heard the future a couple years ago when I was speaking with his administrator from Wisconsin. His name is Ron. And Ron sort of spoke to the future of TPT and he said that, um, well, first he said, hey, I just wanted to introduce myself. My, I found out that a lot of my teachers are on your site. I just heard about your site. And I said, that's terrific. And he said, I don't know if that's terrific. And I said, well, <laughs> tell me a little bit more. And he said, well, these teachers don't make, uh, we don't, pay these teachers well, and they're paying to educate our students. Um, and I just want you to know that our curriculum directors went onto your site, we saw how powerful the platform was, how many resources could meet the needs of many different teachers and students, how differentiated we could make the experiences, and I just want you to know that we made the decision for this next school year that we're getting rid of math textbooks and we're just going to use TPT. 
So that was pretty amazing from a number of levels. One is that these teachers no longer are paying for it. The second thing is that we pay 80% uh, of every sale goes back to the creator, which are these classroom teachers. So you're putting money in the pockets of really um, incredible content creators, incredibly um, knowledgeable and um, uh, experienced teachers. Um, and the other thing is, for these administrators, and in the recent years, more and more of these administrators are making this choice, this is, this is an, a budget improving decision that they're making. So they're actually reducing their budgets, they're reducing the cost of education in their district, and that's actually putting more money back in the system. So when we talk about this issue of underfunding of schools, this issue of underfunding of teacher salaries, um, we think that the future of TPT is actually to find solutions um, to all these uh, sub-issues that really come back to how do you really fund education the way it should be funded. Um, so we're just getting started on this next chapter, uh, but we're pretty fired up about it. Just to piggyback off that really quick, they're not, teachers don't only just pay for the content, right, the like, resources, they're also paying for the professional development. Right. Uh, and that was the experience I had in my first year being asked to pay $1,000 out of pocket to go to a college board training for AP World and go and travel to it and pay for the travel yeah. and for the hotel. It's crazy. <laughs> to which was like, there must be a better way, right? And so that's something that like we're working on as well, right? Like we can live stream that, we can cut the cost of it, we can keep mm -hmm. the teacher in a rural area. They maybe can't reach the like, you know, the city and to get that training, but there's, there's so much knowledge within the teacher community that that's the thing that sounds that's what we're all leveraging. Right. Yeah. And also sort of moving on from that, um, but connecting to that is this idea that all of you are kind of expanding the boundaries of what the classroom is. Um, I would love to know more about teachers' direct response to their experience on your platforms what their sort of interaction is with you, with the companies, with what they're doing, how it affects what they're doing a little bit more. Um, the thing that comes to mind is just this concept in general of online teaching. Um, you know, you're, I mean, we're all kind of, they're doing it in different ways, but um, online teaching is very different than standing in front of a room. Your room was this big, it becomes this little square box. And I think even teachers of like 20 years that apply for VIP kids, sometimes they don't get it. And it's because they don't know how to take their world and put it into an online space. And so as you talk about like experience, their experience in this classroom first is just getting comfortable being online. And that's actually a new skill that can be developed and used in other portions. Like someone who is a VIP kid teacher might be able to then apply to your company and say, I know how to present myself. And it's everything from like lighting to your screen, your, um, the webcam you use. Um, so I think like there's teachers that come to our applicant trainings around the country and they learn how to use a webcam and they learn how to like do their lighting and um, engage someone across the world. And I think that's a really cool new skill that they're starting to develop. Um, and then in our, in, on VIP Kit, all the lessons are recorded for the safety of the students and of the teachers. But teachers can actually go back and watch themselves. Um, and if you think about it, I, don't, I, I did Teach for America, and I got recorded twice in my two or three years in the classroom, and I was appalled at what I saw. I, I was like, oh, why am I walking around so much? But these teachers can watch game film after every class and think about their methodology and how they're teaching and actually do some self-reflection and grow. Um, so this concept of just a recorded classroom in this small space, I mean, there's so many other things that come with it, like props and how do you keep a five-year-old's attention while you pull up your phone and you time them and they play a game on the other side of the world or you have a mascot and they have the same mascot and you tap into kind of their emotional needs. Um, that whole concept can be applied across the board. Um, so that's, I think they're learning a lot about themselves as they go through this process as well. Yeah, about 50% of the tutoring sessions that happen through the Clark platform are online. So similarly, we've seen a lot of teachers who hadn't previously used um, an online classroom use it for the first time, and that's uh, one of the exciting innovations. But I think for us, like the most interesting behavior that educators have had to adopt by using the Clark platform is that in an actual tutoring session, they're live making a session report. And most educators are socialized that you have the, whether it be a tutoring session or a class, and then you sit down afterwards and you write down all the notes. Maybe you're writing an email 
email to the parent, maybe you're writing an e check in to the teacher. We have a really easy tool that makes it possible for educators to collect that data in real time. That includes capturing media, taking pictures, recording pronunciations, if it's maybe a language class, et cetera. And then that means that at the end of a tutoring session, instead of sitting down for your second session, which is documenting what happened, you're just buttoning up a couple of sentences and hitting send. And so the idea that administrative work has to be this separate entity that happens afterwards and progress reporting is something that takes a whole separate hour to do as an educator uh, is now all in one because of the technology solution we built. Mm -hmm. So where really cool. Fiveable is a little bit different than, than for the rest of these companies is, is right now our teacher, you know, the teachers that work for us, there's very, very few of them. And the teachers that benefit from Fiveable are those that it's their students that are using it. And so the way that I sort of see it is like we're kind of the like Robin to their like Batman, yeah. right? Like they're the superheroes that are in the classes and they're the ones doing all the work. Uh, and we're sort of the sidekicks, right? It's 3 p.m. Like go home, like have a life. Like, I, you know, like just <laughs> there's personal things that people want to do and it doesn't have to always be work. But, um, you know, like we kind of take that baton from them and we can be live and we, they can send their kids to us and we can be live streaming and getting the students to talk and think and write and you know, practice at after school. Uh, and so the feedback that we get is pretty powerful because what we're doing is, is really like paralleling what's happening in the classroom, right? It's like, the, it's, it's like, you know, I always use this like metaphor of like, it's like, you know, as a kid, your parents told you something and it was like, I don't wanna hear it, but if some other adult told you, then it's like, they're, they're brilliant, right? And so it was kind of like that. It was like the teachers are saying the same thing over and over again. Like, this is how you write a DBQ. Like, you need to structure it this way. And then I'll say it once at a live stream. The kid's like, why didn't you tell it like that? And it's like, we're not, I'm not doing anything different. I'm just, I'm saying the exact same thing. It's just a different adult saying that. And it gives more power to the teachers when the kids come in and say, hey, like, Miss So-and-so, like, they use the same acronym that you do. Right? They're doing the same things that you're doing. And so now I trust you more. I believe you, right? I don't know. There's some like, power to that. And so I think um, we're just trying to sort of alleviate the, the pressure on teachers to stay after school so that you know, that's where the magic happens. But you know, as we know, the teachers have other side hustles they got to get to. And so we can, we can kind of collaborate in that and make sure that the kids are still getting the support they need, but the teachers can use their time as they need to. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a great metaphor. Yeah, I like that. We see, we, I think we see a number of things in terms of uh, the impact of TPT on teachers outside of um, the platform. So um, I talked about this sense of relief uh, that, that particularly our, our buyers feel on the platform, and that that sense in, that you're not alone, that you're not the only one going through this situation. You know, TPT was founded by um, a, a school teacher in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And he was a middle school teacher, he was new, he was overwhelmed, felt underwater, and he said, I got to have a better way to do this than reinventing the wheel every night for every class that I'm teaching. And I've got a you know, thousand different classes in the span of a year, and I can't do this all myself. Um, so there's that amazing feeling on the, on the buying side, on the, on the people who are using these resources in their classroom that says, you know what, this is manageable, I'm invigorated, and I'm renewed by this, by this work. Um, on the selling side of the platform, it's even more um, astounding, uh, speaking as someone who's been at the company for about five years. Um, I remember my first conference, our, we have seller conferences each year, and to see the excitement that these thousand sellers at this first conference had, it was, um, I thought it was like a Tony Robbins uh, uh, <laughs> presentation. It was, uh, there was, there was a woman named Anna from New York State who, was so excited in the first conference from jumping up and down that she actually, I think, sprained her ankle um, and had to be you know, wheeled around for the rest of the, the conference. And, and what it spoke to was just how, um, how empowered these sellers felt that they were being recognized, respected. They were being um, told that what they brought to the world was deeply, deeply moving. And, they, and that was reflected in the fact that they had all of these people who were using their resources, not in the US alone, but around the world. And that was, um, it, it really hit me. That was early in, in my, uh, my first few weeks at the company. And, and um, I've seen that uh, infinite number of times since then. It's just, it's really, really motivating uh, yeah, to do that to work. to get teachers in a big room, that you see that passion quickly. Oh, I, yeah. I don't, yeah. there's nothing more like invigorating than a bunch of teachers in a room. Yes.
It and, was and we've amazing. seen it even offline too, because all the people who uh, have a Clark Tutoring business communicate with one another in our different community rooms. And similarly, watching the excitement that they have for one another, the excitement they have for continuing yeah. learning and getting access to it, I mean, right. it really makes you get up in the morning differently. You're like, the reason we exist is so these people can keep doing something. Right. And they seem to care about their profession probably far more than any of us seem to care about ours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's exactly right. I was at the same, the same conference and I was speaking with a couple of people and um, they were speaking the way that you would speak with your old uh, college um, roommate. And I said, this is, you know, how long have you known each other? And they said, oh, um, well, actually, we just met 10 minutes ago. <laughs> But, but we've been communicating for yeah. three years on the platform. Right. And, and that um, technology enabling these relationships, which were so meaningful to them and, and such a, a well of support for them was incredible. Because it can be very isolating. You want to yeah. feel like there's somebody else going through the same thing that you are. And I certainly have to imagine from yeah. TPT that you've created community around people who have a shared experience when they're mostly all day alone with yeah. a student. Yeah. Right. Also, just like selling something having someone buy your like worksheet that you like pour you know you pour over these things and you give them to your kids and you hope that that is the like just because the fonts are perfect that maybe they'll like learn better today <laughs> but like when someone actually like buys one yeah. there is like a level of empowerment you're like oh like i don't know like i don't think teachers are seen as professionals and they don't feel that way and because they're not treated that way and so i think it's it's yeah. giving them another window into that of just like being proud of it in a different way right yeah we, we have, um, years ago, with our, uh, our seller uh, app for, for the iPhone, um, one of the, probably, they didn't even realize at the time, the most ingenious things that was created was anytime you make a sale, um, there's like a cash register cha-ching sound. <laughs> and um, it is the most exciting thing whenever you're with a group of teachers and all of a sudden one of their phones goes yeah. off. They all applaud for each other. Yes. Um, and if for any reason the app is malfunctioning because of that, we hear within milliseconds. Yeah. So, Where's um, my cash register? It's, yeah. uh, it's pretty valuable. You need to know you're doing a good job. That's yeah. the first That's right. lesson in teaching. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is a question that's more for Joe and Kevin, and it's kind of about this idea of how uh, U.S. teachers versus global teachers, how they respond to each other, how they react to the platforms that they're using. Do you see sort of a difference or collaboration or, you know, what's your impression based on that? U.S. versus, versus international teachers. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, you want to go first or do you? Um, no, I mean, U.S. resident. I mean, we focus mostly on U.S. and Canadian teachers, so that's the primarily the people we're working with. Um, but I think um, I well, get, maybe for yeah, that. maybe yeah. international learning, um, since you are dealing with got it, a sort of yes. another culture and country. Exactly. I think the di here's the difference. So um, you know, in China. Everyone's learning English. Um, there's a big English exam at the end of the year, I mean, at the end of their schooling. And um, they teach a certain way, right? There's more rote memorization. There's a, there are big classes of maybe 60 students. Um, and so I think what ends up happening is like the American teacher actually becomes very proud of how far we've come in our learning, our, our teaching, project based learning. Um, using the Common Core, um, more conversational, like um, like more question asking, right? And so what ends up happening is the teachers come away from that experience saying, like, "Wow, these Chinese students really appreciate my methodology um, and how I work." You know, the, now the students actually have to present projects to their teachers, which that necessarily wouldn't necessarily be happening in their classrooms at school. Um, and so I think they're very proud of like how that they have a good foundation um, and someone else appreciates it so much. So it reinforces the way that they're teaching and how? Yes, it re definitely reinforces it. And the parents really appreciate that the students are just getting a different style of learning at the same time. So we're just getting started on the international side. So we mm -hmm. have um, Canada and Australia both uh, we see over two thirds, about 70% of teachers in those countries are using TPT as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of work ahead of us in terms of um, making the experience richer on a local level. Um, a lot of times our uh, Canadian teachers um, you know, have to adjust on their own resources right. for the US market. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, same thing you know, with Australia and others. Um, but it is pretty clear that if you have 
great content, if you're creating great materials, that buyers will figure out how to make it work in their classrooms. We just need to do a better job making it easier. Um, but with those three countries, you know, so far we're seeing um, a lot of uh, just excitement about the platform. Great. And so you guys are the thought leaders on this, these concepts of you know, using teachers' skills, what they already know, what they've learned, and applying them to other, in other ways in terms of making more money or employment or sort of generating, uh, feeling good about what they're doing. What, outside of what you do in your companies, where do you see this space expanding? I mean, for me, leaving the classroom, I wasn't really sure what to do with next. I, I knew I had skills in, you know, speaking and planning and just things. Um, and so just in building Fiveable, I've been sort of like tapping into a lot of those skills that aren't so obvious, right? They aren't making worksheets, right? Like I can do that, like, <laughs> but like, you know, just in the how I think about building a product or managing a team and um, marketing and different like creative aspects and just like reaching more people. And so one of the things that I'm sort of seeing is, is that there is more room to like empower teachers to innovate because I don't think that there are, you know, a lot of ed tech companies are not necessarily started by a teacher. And I think that teachers have a lot of ideas. And if they had the agency to then create, like what does it even look like, right? Like I don't know, like I, don't, I didn't know what an ed tech company might look like or what a VC is or just all these different aspects of it. And these are like, you know, bigger, bigger plays. But I think that like some of the biggest changes in classrooms are gonna come from teachers because they're the ones in it. And they, they see what's happening and they're creating something for their students. And then it becomes like, how do we then expand that? And so, yeah, I totally agree with that. I think that the entrepreneurial spirit in educators is going to become for sure a, a big part of the future of education. And that coupled with also something that we're seeing in our platform, which is because we run the operations of all these businesses, we don't dictate what subjects the educators on Clark uh, teach or tutor rather, but we do see what the subjects are and how parents rate them. And I think that what we're noticing is that it's not just test prep, it's not just how can I perform on AP, but kids are requesting tutoring subjects and things that are applicable to the job that they're gonna get mm -hmm. after school or interests that they have outside of their K through 12 classroom. Um, I mean, an obvious one is coding, is one of the fastest growing subjects that people are requesting from a Clark tutor. So I think when I think where the future of education is going and how our platforms will be privy to it, we'll be some of the first people to see the subjects that kids are gonna be prioritizing for either their future careers or in terms of higher education that they'll take in lieu of doing higher ed. Um, you know, we have 70,000 teachers on our platform, 600,000 students, supposed to be 100,000 teachers by the end of the year, and they're all ESL. Um, they're all teaching ESL or English language learners. So I think what you're going to see is an indirect effect on this. All these teachers back in their classrooms working with ELL learners, whether they're um, you know, recent transplants or down in San Diego um, in the Hispanic community or refugee community. And you're going to start seeing way more teachers empathetic to the ENL plight um, and improving their experience in the American classroom as well. So you're going to see that kind of go from helping students all the way in China to then having that other effect because these teachers are now well prepared to handle bilingual classrooms and ELL students. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, for us, when we think about um, the way TBT is growing, it, we've, we, we're centered a lot around right now classroom resources, something that somebody's using in that classroom. But the broader theme, the broader vision is around harnessing this collective expertise and wisdom of these teachers. And so right now, that's manifesting itself in the ways that I just mentioned. But you can imagine there's a ton of ways when you think about communication and collaboration, ultimately being able to support each teacher with those teachers who have experienced the same thing, who've been there before, who can provide that s source of support or wisdom or um, insight or just um, casual professional development, uh, all of that is, is within the realm of w uh, what we're targeting because we have this um, extraordinary reach that, that we've uh, gotten to here on TPT. And so we're really thrilled with that uh, possibility uh, in the future. And, and that's, that's what we're really focused on. That's great. 
So I think we have to wrap it up. I believe all of you are going to be sticking around. If you have any questions, they should be here. And I've heard a lot of applause from next door. So I would love to hear some applause for these guys. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you guys.